So now I've moved over to Evernote. A lot of people are probably asking how am I using the application? Now, obviously that is quite long winded. So that's why I'm gonna do an Evernote setup tool with you today. Give you a bit of an idea of how I'm using the application. Before we begin today's video, uh, this video is sponsored by Pipedrive. You can check out more about them below, but there's gonna be a little bit of an explainer about them a little later in today's video. So just to give you some premise, um, many people know that I moved from Notion to Evernote most recently, probably out about two months ago now, just because I wasn't really utilizing the tool as much as I thought I would be. Now, as you can imagine, for personal use, um, Notion is sort of like a Swiss army knife, um, and it does a lot of things. Um, you know, you can access all the stuff on the Swiss army knife, but not necessarily always, you don't always need them. And my sort of, I guess, my sort of thing was that I was not really using everything. I was pretty much just, I think there's a spoon on the Swiss army knife I was probably just using the spoon and in that case I thought why don't I bring it down to its bare minimum and move back to Evernote so of course my account has been active for like uh, nine years now so I have over 3,800 notes over that time period so in today's video I'm going to share three cool things with you the first is the notes I take the second is the notebooks I have and the third is a little bit more about the remarkable setup that I currently have that I'm testing and pretty much enjoying Okay, so let's start with the notes. So as you can see here, this is my Evernote account. And as you can imagine, it's been a lot more active most recently because I'm using it as my day to day uh, note taker. And as you can see here, I don't really take that many sort of advanced notes. Most recently, I've been saving journals and workouts that I've been using with the Remarkable, which I'll tell you about in a bit. But as you can see here, it's anything from like documents, like student loan documents, to, um, you know, the window cleaner invoices um, and workouts and meetings that I've had. And it's mainly just personal stuff. So things that I'd be saving in there anyway. And I, as you can imagine, um, have been doing for a long time, but as you can imagine, now doing it more often. Them. So basically anything I was using Notion for, like for example, personal finances, this is all now inside of the application. Whereas in, in Notion, I was using more advanced uh, uh, tables. In Evernote, I'm using very simple tables that you can see on screen now. So in terms of notes, you can see here that I'm obviously taking them uh, uh, obviously a lot on the desktop. However, I actually am taking them on my phone a lot. One of the most recent ways that I've been using Evernote is to do my journal. And also I, I've got the pre so I'm sending more emails into them to allow me to capture useful stuff. And it's more specifically for arranging items around house move and things like this. So let me share you a little bit more about the notebooks that I have inside of the Evernote. So as you can see here, I've really moved away from the power method a little bit. The only reason is because whilst it's a great little system, I think I'm more sort of generalized these days and I've sort of adapted it over the years to be very helpful. So I guess if you see here, I have an area called work documents. This is a stack and if I open it up, I have Keep Productive, so that's any notes on Keep Productive, business receipts and tax documents. Now as how this differs from the likes of Notion is not really a planner, it's more of a dumping location. So for example, with business receipts and tax, docu tax documents, it's helpful to have them handy and accessible there. Inside of the house wiki, I have three notebooks. They are for each of the houses that we've been in or flats and it helps keep a tally of everything from providers to you know uh, the sort of move documents, deposit information, stuff like that. It is associated specifically with that house. And I even have a third one, which is called Unknown Road, which allows me to plan what we're going to be doing in the next house, sort of like getting an idea of that. So it's sort of like a future proofing with that. So the house wiki is quite helpful as a way to sort of plan and organize house, work, house stuff. So resources and documents is a little bit different. I've sort of kept the structure very similar. So as you can see here, I've tidied everything up with a emojis, but I've got everything from appliance guides. These are things that come through that I can take a photo of, like, you know, like boiler um, information, financial planning, which is just general planning and sort of documents. And also student stuff like student finances, Bex's documents, which is stuff that she gets through the post or something like that that's important to her. Otto's documents, which is starting to fill up now, the journal and also provider documents, everyday receipts, phone contracts, voting, travel, health and car, all the sort of stuff you'd expect to see in there. 
that will be handy in the specific time and when the time comes. So this is the archive cabinet and to be honest it's sort of a dumping ground for everything that has been in the past. I might clean this up because I don't really need a lot of this stuff now but it's actually handy to be able to go back and see anything that be referenced. Now I've got a notebook here called learnings. I'm still working this out. I'll probably pop this inside of resources. I may even do it now to be honest because it's 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 mainly just for like scribblings on courses and notes and I'm starting to use a remarkable to send into there. And finally inbox is simply a location for capturing stuff. As you can see here it's got all of my sort of things that I need to sort into the right folders or notebooks. So just to pause for a sec probably people asking like uh, how, Fran how Francesco are you using the new Evernote home? I haven't really set it up in the full extent. Um, I don't think it's something that until the other widgets come in I'm going to be using massively. But I guess if once it's on my mobile device that'll make more sense because it means that I can sort of get stuff faster. Whereas on desktop I'm not necessarily using it at the moment anyway. I, I might probably use a scratch pad in the future for taking like these short sort of dribbles of notes or course notes or something like this but at the moment it's very just working out what the feature is first before I use it. So this is the note that I opened up on and as you can see it's a workout summary. So the third way I'm using it is the remarkable setup and I've only been doing this for about a month now but I'm actually really enjoying it so I'm testing the remarkable 2 and what I'm going to what I do is actually send in the documents as a PDF. Every time I finish it it could be on a journal or a workout I go ahead and write up obviously whatever things is there make some notes and be able to forward on. And as you can imagine, it comes in as this. What I simply do while I'm in the inboxing process is delete this start bit, and then I have workout and the date and the time and all the information I need to know. This is really useful for journaling. Uh, I've actually found this a lot easier than getting the notebook out. I think there's something nice about having a digital version of it, uh, it's sort of that I can access at any given time. As you can imagine, the one thing I really want Evernote to have is the end-to-end -end encryption because I think that's really relevant these days, especially with the amount of sort of data breaches that happen during uh, the lockdown. So I've also been doing things like this where if I have a, a Nike workout that I've done, I've screenshot it and I can literally just paste it into a note on my phone and upload it and it's been quite helpful. I've also been doing a lot more of this as well. As you can see, it's like a home move plan. I've just been creating a very simple table and just starting out making some notes and getting things moving. Vice versa with this sort of thing, like the staycation march ideas, and just jotting them down on my phone and being able to save all these documents. So just to give you like sort of an idea of the journals that I do in the morning is like, here's a little short entry that I did at the top but then I have this really nice thing recently that I've been trying to do from essentialism it's not necessarily referenced as a, a method in essentialism but narrowing down my sort of three core things in the day and this actually has been really helpful to sort of plan the day ahead it really keeps me narrowed and if I get these three things done then I've done big bolder sort of stuff as I move forward now you're probably wondering how do I send these on so when I make a note in the remarkable I've got a notebook called journal and what I'll do is I'll scribble up the note and then what I'll do is I'll go to the bottom left hand corner and send it by email. I'll name it, uh, try and simple name convention like the date and the way the UK do it and a dash and journal and then I send that page as the PDF. This is a really simple way to do it but I actually really like the sort of um, offline experience of it and being able to know that my journal is on Evernote when I get to the computer at least for for example when I'm midway through the day and I'm like what were my focuses again if they're not meant to do this application then I can see them there quite easily. So in terms of other sort of systems and processes I actually use G to capture most of the stuff that I know I need to capture. So what I'll do is any documents or things that come into the house, I'll keep inside of this middle drawer just below me here and I'll process them every single week. I'll take them out, snap them into Evernote and move on and forward. There's specific things during my week where I'll, for example, I'll go into our physical filing cabinet and I'll go, you know, I didn't actually have our student loan documents inside of Evernote, so I'll make sure to copy them over to them. So that's quite helpful sometimes to be like, oh wow, I didn't have that. Useful for numbers, information, and especially when you're making um, looking to move very soon. So that's my experience of Evernote. To be honest, I'll, I'll give you my opinion on it. Um, in terms of Evernote 10, I've been impressed at the way that it works. 
not impressed at the bugs. I've had a fair amount of bugs over the last couple of weeks. Small things like it not loading the note or it not actually uploading the image through the thing if I don't press the tick button, which it should automatically do. And even sometimes some uh, technical issues with the internet access. I know these are real minor things, but at the same time, it does help to bring that experience a bit easier. So there are, I'd say, a, a fair few bugs. And this is something I probably want to talk to Ian and the team about when they're aiming to get it fixed. So guys, hopefully that was a useful overview of how I use Evernote. Um, we'll dive into the pipe drive uh, ad now to share a little bit more about that. But I just want to say a big thank you. I hope this was useful for you at home. Let me know if you have any comments below and uh, naturally I'm going to be continuing to expand my use over the next couple of weeks. So I'll talk to you all very soon and here's a little bit more about pipe drive. So folks, it is great to have Pipedrive back as a sponsor here on Keep Productive. If you don't know what Pipedrive is, it's a powerful sales CRM software. Now, since we last showed them off, they've actually released a new part of Pipedrive. It's called Lead Suite, and it's a fully GDPR compliant way to get more leads before they drift elsewhere. It's a set of features that are available to add to any Pipedrive CRM subscription. So they include a chatbot for automatically engaging with your web visitors 24 seven, live chat, which basically adds a human touch, allowing you to take over conversations from the chatbot anywhere at any time, web forms to help you create really attractive ways to capture useful information, as well as Prospector for finding your next business opportunity from a global database of 400 million profiles. Now what's really cool with Prospector is you can build a persona of your target customers and use your credits to reveal high quality leads generated based on that ideal customer. You have also got Leads Inbox, a perfect way to manage all your leads in one central location. With all of the lovely features included like chat integrations, labels, filters and activities that you know and love inside of Pipedrive already. Now, if you want to try out Lead Suite, we've got an extended free trial of 30 days. It's normally 14 and 25% off your first three months. You can find a link in the description. Thanks again to Pipedrive for coming on to Keep Productive and we really hope you enjoy this feature spotlight.